Again tonight with the breaking news in University City where gunfire erupted in a packed shopping center and one person was shot. This happened around 7.30 on Collins Aikman Drive near W.T. Harris. We have our Stephanie Tinoco live out there tonight. Now, Steph, I know you spoke with witnesses. What did they say? Hey, Scott, well, a grandfather I spoke with shared this text message with me, his granddaughter telling him that someone was shot while she was inside of the salon. Now, CMPD hasn't really confirmed whether someone was shot inside a building or in the parking lot, but what we do know is that person has life-threatening injuries. They told us that when officers responded around 7.30 this evening, they responded to an assault with a deadly weapon call, and there were at least a dozen officers and detectives here. We watched officers speak to multiple people in the parking lot, and it was taped off for several hours. You're actually working on taking down some of that tape now. And we watched detectives also walk inside the salon in the plaza. And the grandfather I told you about earlier said he pulled up to the scene. His granddaughter is in high school and she was just getting her hair done for prom tomorrow when the shooting happened. He told me officers would not let him go past the crime scene tape, but thankfully was able to text her to make sure she was okay. I said, what's going on? I saw a lot of yellow tape, and I'm going to get my granddaughter out of here. Well, as of tonight, no arrests have been made, and we're asking the same questions detectives are working to answer. Who was involved and what exactly led up to the shooting? Uh, we're working to get those answers for you and bring you any new update as soon as we get them. Live in University City, Stephanie Tinoco, Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 10. More than a thousand people were on the campus at Central Piedmont Community College tonight to rally for presidential candidate Senator Bernie Sanders. That with your help, we're going to win the Democratic primary. For more than an hour, Sanders touched on restoring voting rights, education inequality, and eradicating poverty. One woman told us that she supports Sanders' plan for health care, something that means a lot to her after dealing with a major debt after dealing with fertility procedures. And it's really hard to, you know, want something and then to worry about the money and to be um, in so much debt, you know, just to want a family. The Republican National Committee released a statement on the rally saying that Bernie Sanders' agenda will, quote, cost taxpayers and grow our government exponentially. One of Charlotte's biggest events is here and for the next week thousands of NASCAR fans will be out for the festivities. Um, you got All-Star Race and then the Coca-Cola 600. Yeah, the events draw families in from different parts of the country and as our Brianna Harper found out, it's more than just a race for those who come year after year. Yeah, Eric and Scott, I spoke to families who traveled from all over for this weekend's NASCAR All-Star Race. They tell me it's much more than just the speeding cars. It's an experience. That's the sound that NASCAR is in town. And fans tell me that means there's always plenty to look forward to. What are we looking forward to? Gosh, everything. From the minute we get here to the minute we go. For the Greer family, it's all about tradition. Over the past four years, they've been enjoying the two weeks of fun at Charlotte Motor Speedway, starting with the All-Star Race this week, followed by the Coca-Cola 600 next weekend. And even some of the youngest fans come out to show their support. Why do you like Kyle Busch so much? Because he has the m, &M car. <laughs> you got the t-shirt, I see. Yeah. yeah. But it's more than just the sport and the fans. It's also about family. Out to the races, it brings us all together and we all just have a great time. With the crowd of thousands, you'll certainly be sharing that great time with strangers from all across the country who quickly become friends. I love the people in North Carolina. I really do. We have met some amazing people from here. While most fans might disagree who their favorite driver is, I'm expecting uh, Larson to win. <laughs> they all seem to agree on at least one thing. I mean, there's never a dull moment here at this track. And while some of the NASCAR All-Star events start today, obviously the big event is tomorrow night's All-Star Race. Reporting live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Brianna Harper, Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 10. Thank you, Brianna. Well, thousands of people in our area for All-Star Weekend and the Coca-Cola 600. There will be more traffic on our roads and highways, and you can find ways to get around the added congestion by going to our WSOC-TV News app.
A massage therapist faced a judge for the first time today accused of inappropriately touching a woman while she was getting a massage. The woman claims that Matthew Del Senor violated her at Hand and Stone Massage in Huntersville. He is now charged with sexual battery. The North Carolina Board of Massage and Bodywork Therapy is also investigating her claims. Del Senor no longer works at Hand and Stone. Two other women are suing that spa in a separate case. They say that another masseuse sexually assaulted them during a massage. The women say that Hand and Stone should not have hired that masseuse in the first place because he faced similar accusations when he worked at Massage Envy. It's going to be the big story for us. We just want to give you an idea of that system right there right now rolling on through parts of Kansas. Uh, roll it back here. You can see this is basically just to the uh, just to the west of Dodge City, over Dodge City, just to the west of Wichita, south of 70. That's where we're seeing those supercells producing tornadoes there. And of course, that area is dealing with that higher risk for severe weather today. Well, out of that picture for us, in fact, going back to uh, or at least going forward to the next week, or so our main story is going to be about the dry weather. We haven't seen any rain since last weekend and we aren't really going to see much over the next seven days. Instead, without much rain, the big story for us will be about the heat today coming short of 90 degrees. We're going to be back up there tomorrow. In fact, breaking that 90 degree mark here tomorrow about 92. We'll do the same on Sunday before we get a week front that won't do much to our temperatures. But next week, tracking another heat wave with temperatures approaching the mid 90s. So your forecast tomorrow, 92 in Charlotte will be well above that average high and will come within a couple of degrees of records. I think that record is safe at 94 tomorrow, but still that UV index is going to be cranked to the max, so very high out there. So certainly just be mindful if you're going to be outside. Make sure you got that sunscreen. Stay hydrated and dress light as you are going to be out and about maybe doing some yard work, that sort of thing. The other thing you'll notice on top of the heat is that humidity is starting to really crack up as well. Starting to become noticeable. You'll definitely notice it tomorrow as you're out and about. It's not going to be miserable, but if you spend a lot of time outside, it's definitely something you'll notice. Even a touch muggier on Sunday and next week, it's going to be downright humid, especially towards the end of the week as we see another ridge of high pressure setting up. But like I mentioned, future cast keeping us dry. I will fast forward it through the day tomorrow. Notice mostly sunny skies. I won't rule out a stray shower. We may not be totally dry across our region, but most areas coverage I think will be very low tomorrow and again on Sunday as the big story continues to be focused <laughs> on the heat. Lots going on outside this weekend. A lot of festivals going on. Should be a nice weekend to enjoy and not have to worry about a threat for storms, but definitely plan for the heat. Oh, yeah. Stay cool out there. You need to be Do hydrated and sunscreen and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at this. An inventor created this jet suit. It lets people glide through the air, and uh, he has big plans for this in the future. The inventor, Richard Browning, is a former British Royal Marine, and he recently showed off what this suit can do in Atlanta. Of course, you got jets on each arm, and... Uh, on the back as well, weighs about 65 pounds. He can go as high as 80 feet and reach speed of 60 miles per hour. He says it's actually pretty easy to use. So now the moment you take off, it actually is, it's kind of like leaning forward on a table at about, I don't know, 45 degrees. It really isn't very difficult at all. The feeling is probably best described as a bit like that dream that you have every now and then about being kind of weightless and floating around. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, he says he hopes this will inspire a new generation to get involved in STEM and create like he loves to do. Well, meantime, he wants to have a race series with the suits and is working on an electric version that he hopes will be more useful to everyone.